Lockheed's F-94 Starfire was the first U.S. jet with an afterburner, developed as part of the first generation of jet aircraft for the U.S. Air Force. It adopted several development features from the twin-seat Lockheed T-33 Shooting Star. The F-94 Starfire was created at the end of the 1940s to be an all-weather day and night interceptor. Entering service in May 1950 under the Air Defense Command, the plane took the piston engine F-82 twin Mustang's place in the defense arsenal. Its specific mission would be to target the emerging threat posed by the Soviet's nuclear-armed Tupolev Tu-4 bomber, which had been reverse-engineered from the U.S.'s B-29 Superfortress. Aside from being the first to feature an afterburner, the Starfire was the first aircraft of its type to see combat in the Korean War in January 1953. Despite its success, its operational history was brief once the Northrop F-89 Scorpion and North American F-86D Sabre replaced it by mid-1950. The Soviet Threat At the 1947 Soviet Aviation Day in Tushino Airport, the USSR displayed an aircraft that took the world by surprise. The Tupolev Tu-4 had four engines and served as a long-range strategic bomber. In reality, it was an almost identical copy of Boeing's B-29 Superfortress. Soviets reverse-engineered wreckage of the strategic bomber after one crash landed during the bombing raids against Japan. Not at all surprising, the Soviets pursued a nuclear arsenal. Therefore, the introduction of a military plane capable of carrying atomic warheads was more than worrisome to the international community. Suddenly, the threat of nuclear warfare from the air was from a foreign superpower. In the post-war years, the U.S. Air Force didn't have a modern all-weather fighter who could face this new Soviet threat. Initial attempts to obtain such an aircraft resulted in failure. The first such failure, the XP-87 Blackhawk, was ordered in 1945, but complications in the development stage stalled the project by the end of 1948. The Northrop P-89 Scorpion was the next plane with promising features. Upon testing, it exhibited significant teething issues and would be delayed until 1952. Without a replacement, the Northrop P-61 Black Widow Night Fighter had to continue fulfilling its role, one for which it was not cut out. Particular adaptations were made to the American F-82 Twin Mustang to quickly fill the void left by the delay in Northrop Scorpion's development. The U.S. Air Force desperately needed a replacement for the F-82 Twin Mustang, one that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Soviet bombers. The existing American aircraft fleet couldn't compete with the Soviets' new intercontinental strategic strike capabilities. As a solution, the U.S. Air Force reached out to Lockheed to start work on a worthy interceptor, the F-94 Starfire. Development of the Starfire commenced in 1948. A direct descendant of the first American fighter jet, the Shooting Star, the Starfire was also drawn from the latter T-33A Shooting Star. Early F-94 models shared three out of every four parts with the initial F-80 Shooting Star, which helped speed up development and lower production costs. Secretary of Defense Forrestal approved the project in November 1948, with the President's authorization to release funds coming soon after. In January of the following year, Lockheed signed a contract which asked for 150 F-94As, later decreased to 109. Production The first production model was designated the F-94A, entering operational service in May 1950. The Starfire was armed with four 12.7mm M3 Browning machine guns placed in the fuselage and muzzles pointing outward from behind the radome. It carried two 16-gallon drop tanks for 1,000-pound bombs under its wingtips. The second version of the aircraft was the F-94B, which started deploying in January 1951. It was nearly identical to version A, all modifications being internal, which included extensive work on the Allison J-33 turbojet. The engine became more reliable. The pilot got a boost, too, with a more spacious cockpit. The canopy changed with a bow frame in the middle between the two seats. A new instrument landing system was added as well. The F-94B proved reliable as a service aircraft, exhibiting very few issues. It soon replaced the A models currently active in squadrons. A planes were sent back to Lockheed to be refitted and re-engined to become F-94Bs. The newly modified aircraft had a pod underneath each wing that added 12.7mm machine guns to the total armament of eight guns. These planes were then sent to Air National Guard units, where they remained in service for most of the decade. Most extraordinary of all, the F-94 became the first United States production jet to feature an afterburner. Its J-33A-33 engine had a regular thrust of 4,000 pounds that could be increased to 5,400 with water injection. Still, the F-94A is at first exhibited issues with the afterburner's igniter and flame stabilization system. C version. In 1948, the U.S. Air Force specified a new alteration, a fast, radar-equipped interceptor. The most recognizable and extensively used version was the F-94C. 
It bore little resemblance to its preceding developmental Starfires, to the point that it was almost placed in a new category of F-97s. The added weight of the electronic equipment introduced during the seed version development was too much for the J-33 turbojet to handle. Therefore, the aircraft had to be fitted with a different one. Although the first two F-94s were successful, the USAF wasn't as impressed with the new Lockheed Martin products. Therefore, the sea platform was completely overhauled. The resulting plane had thinner yet strong wings as well as a swept tail design. The new afterburner was the more massive Pratt & Whitney J-48, generating 6,350 pounds of thrust while operating as usual. Lockheed test pilot Tony Levere even claimed that the F-94C was capable of supersonic flight in a steep dive with the afterburner firing. Operational Service At the beginning of the Korean War, the U.S. Air Force used the F-82 twin Mustang, which, while reliable, also proved slow as the jet era dawned. Squadrons under the Air Defense Command were the first users of the F-94. Eventually, 26 used the new interceptor. The Far East Air Force in the Pacific had three full squadrons with F-94B Starfires. Furthermore, the Air Defense Command's 319th Interceptor Squadron, which used the jet, was also sent to South Korea to provide perimeter air protection for the nation's capital. The first of these planes landed at Japan in March 1951, where it was assigned as the 339th Fighter All-Weather Squadron at Johnson Air Base. In the coming months, the 68th Fighter All-Weather Squadron at Itazuke received Starfires as well. At the same time, pilots and radar operators flew combat missions over North Korea from Suwon Air Base, providing aerial defense for the border region of South Korea. Still, twin Mustangs were widespread for these missions. These missions raised alarms at the Far East Air Force headquarters in December 1951, when MiG-15 jets flew over the South Korean capital. The only available interceptors flying in the vicinity were six F-82Gs and a couple of Marine Grumman F-7E Tiger Cats. Immediately, two F-94Bs were sent by the 68th Squadron to Suwon to provide further support. The twin Mustangs and the Tiger Cats continued reconnaissance and weather surveillance missions over North Korea. At the same time, the Starfires supervised and intercepted enemies over South Korea and the Yellow Sea. The Starfire aircraft flew pads that prevented the enemy from gaining access to wreckage, not risking the potential for reverse engineering should it be shot down. At the beginning of 1952, the Air Defense Command deployed the 319th Fighter Interceptor Squadron of the 52nd Air Division to Japan. They relieved the 68th Squadron at Itazuke. One of the detachment squadrons flew to Misawa to conduct air defense flights over Honshu and Hokkaido, anticipating possible incoming Soviet interventions emerging from Sakhalin or Vladivostok. While pursuing an unknown intruding aircraft at night, one of the Starfires crashed over the Yellow Sea in February 1952. To this day, facts about the event remain unknown. A witness saw a midair explosion between Heju, North Korea, and the island of Taeyeon, Pyongdo. The primary concern was whether or not the North Koreans got their hands on the wreckage. An extensive search and rescue mission was underway. After three months of investigation, they concluded the plane crashed and sunk to the bottom of the Yellow Sea, disappearing forever. In 1952, nightly combat air patrol missions began at Suwon using B-29 superfortresses. The 68th Squadron, reassigned to Japan, was still under a one-hour alert for any possible combat in Korea. By June, enemy jets first intercepted F-94s. These minor incidents led to crew's belief that the communists were testing new radar warning equipment. Supporting this theory, whenever the F-94s prepared to shoot, the MiGs would immediately dive into evasive moves. This could only mean one thing. They had a warning radar like that on the Starfire. Aside from intercepts, the aircraft was credited with a handful of air-to-air -air victories. Among these, one won the first nighttime dogfight victory against a MiG-15. Another fell to enemy action, while six others were lost on combat missions allegedly to non-enemy causes. Two went missing, and three more were lost to accidents. Once the armistice in Korea was signed, tensions decreased, but Starfire kept flying over Japan and South Korea. Discontinuation the A and B versions of the aircraft were in active duty through mid-1954, along with F-89 Scorpions and some F-86D Sabres. Many were sent to the Air National Guard as replacements for shooting stars and Mustangs. In the late 50s, the F-94Cs were assigned to the Air National Guard, leading to an eventual 22 squadrons being equipped with Starfire interceptors. The revolutionary technologies of the F-94, however, were not enough to rescue it from the chopping block, as aerial combat's future was being redefined by guided air-to-air -air missiles. Unfortunately, the F-94's rockets can only shoot in a straight trajectory, making it significantly less appealing as an interceptor. A D-model armed with bombs never made it past the prototype stage. Its operational service was ultimately cut short by newer aircraft developed as part of the Cold War arms race. The last F-94C was discharged from Air Force service in November 1957, and the remaining F-94Cs left the Air National Guard service in 1959.